the grammar school for girls at Wilmington in Kent, a designated maths and computing college. The Brit School in Croydon, Greater London, an arts and technology college. Two contrasting styles, but is one more rigorous and testing? Two different specialisms, but is one more valuable or important? There are questions at the centre of the argument over dumbing down, over academic studies versus vocational and creative courses. For traditionalists, classes like this are the soft option, which they fear students are choosing because they have an easier time and take an easier exam. The same critics believe it's part of a wider decline in standards and don't accept the apparent evidence of record-breaking exam results. We'll be looking at the claims through the eyes of students and staff from Wilmington and Croydon. Two sixth formers, accompanied by one teacher, will spend a day in each other's school. We'll discover whether the experience changes or reinforces their perception of what's hard and what's better, and whether both schools actually have more in common than any outsider might suspect. Our school is a small school, but it does attempt to give students a, a breadth of subjects. And, and outside of the academic subjects and outside of the, the lessons, we try to accommodate and, and create a much a more well-rounded student. There's absolutely no point in developing um, a young person to burn out at the age of 22 or 23 because they've not had a rounded, holistic education. Similarly, we need to pay uh, due respect to the need to educate all of our children in the basics, the basic three R's as they used to call them. We'll also be hearing from two groups on opposing sides of the dumbing down debate, but found on the same street in central London. The Royal Society of Chemistry, which believes schools should prioritise core academic subjects, is based at one end of Piccadilly media creative arts while it has a very important role there has to be struck the right balance between meeting what appears to be an immediate need and preparing the individual for the rest of his or her life and, and I, I don't think we've got the right balance Ofqual set up to oversee standards and exams shares offices with the QCA at the other end of Piccadilly different students We'll have uh, different interests, we'll have different strengths and weaknesses, and from, from amongst that uh, uh, whole range of subjects that are offered at GCSE and A-level, uh, you'd hope they'd be able to choose the ones that, that suit them best. We'll also be talking to a senior lecturer at the Institute of Education, where there's an obvious interest in monitoring and maintaining standards. I think there's always a grave difficulty in saying that one piece of knowledge is harder or more difficult than another piece of knowledge. Um, it's, so, it's based on so many different factors. And I, I, I frankly think that dumbing down is rather a dumb sort of phrase itself. And we'll be going inside the offices of the Daily and Sunday Telegraph, just one part of the media where there's concern about media studies and other so-called soft subjects. What you find there is the information that pupils have to reproduce is more and more common sense information. It's the kind of information you can pick up by watching TV, reading a newspaper, just, you know, being alive. The Brit School visitors arrive at the Grammar School for Girls at Wilmington and are taken to their first lesson of the day. Students Shakira and Aaron, along with their teacher John, have never crossed the threshold of a single-sex selective school before. Their first class is sociology. Come in. Some space over there. The school is keen to demonstrate that, although it might be looked upon as a traditional grammar, it does not have a purely academic curriculum. So, evidence of secularisation. Can you remember them? Evidence for secularisation. Chapel conversions. But it's the idea that we've, we've taken sacred buildings and turn them to secular use. Never been to a same-sex school, so I didn't really know what to expect. I was a bit shocked. You know, there's an awful lot of people here. It actually is completely different from what I'm used to. It was really bizarre at first. What and the mean? uniform, for me, that was the weirdest thing. I didn't think it was that formal, actually, for like a grammar school. I think yeah. it, the teachers taught with, like, they were very easy with their students, they communicate well and it was comfortable. It wasn't, you have to do this. They could, I don't know, it seemed yeah. 
you could approach them. Next is business studies and a lesson about inflation. Does everybody remember doing monetary and fiscal policy? Fiscal's taxes. Is outstanding, right? Fiscal's the school is able to offer a wider range of subjects, including media studies, by forming a partnership with four neighbouring schools and a further education college. I would certainly say business studies is relevant to everybody. It's ingrained in politics, history, and encompasses many other subjects. So important for that reason. So I would you know, recommend that they probably have a, a bit of a mix in terms of academics and uh, more vocational <coughs> subjects. But no, I wouldn't you know, necessarily push uh, people to one way or the other. It has to be their decision and something that you know, they enjoy ultimately that is important. I think that it's horses for courses. I think there are some kids that are naturally drawn towards more academic and more scientific type courses, and there are kids that are drawn more towards artistic courses. And I think we've got a decent balance in this country of that. It's time for maths, where the class is joined by students from the partnership schools. For this maths teacher, who also leads the school's gifted and talented program, it's not a question of one subject being any more difficult than another. It all comes down to the individual student. Some students find maths easier and would feel very uncomfortable trying to produce a piece of drama and vice versa. But our job is to make sure that in the early stages of their education they get a fair go at everything so that you know, no options are turned away from them at the beginning. What's the deal with lunch? You're learning like a different subject base. Maths is completely different from photography. Different people as well, like, they use different sides of their brains and so they're more suited for mathematics and science, the way they think. You know, they're better with numbers, whereas some people are just more creative. It's claimed, however, that pupils' subject choices may not be based on their particular talents or interests, but on their belief that it's easier to get higher grades in creative and vocational subjects. We do know that if there is a 16-year-old who might get a grade B at A-level, if he can be persuaded by his tutor at school, but if he or she did something else and got an A, that, that is the way it will go. A comparative study, however, has failed to find any difference in difficulty between the so-called harder and softer subjects. We got some experts who had sufficient knowledge across at least two subjects to try to make some comparisons. Um, so we had one study that looked at biology, psychology and sociology. Uh, and we had another one that looked at um, English literature, history and media studies and we were getting people to make a judgement about is the sociology easier than biology? Is media studies easier than English literature? The judgments led us to believe that media studies is no easier than English literature. Um, uh, sociology is no, is no easier than, than biology. For some, trying to make comparisons between subjects is absurd. It's comparing chalk with cheese. And there is evidence that, you know, there are higher grades, there are a proportion of higher grades in those subjects than in science. In science. But whether you can then draw the conclusion from them that, they're, that science is harder isn't necessarily the case. It might be that brighter students are saying, well, actually, you know, given what with the knowledge society and the way knowledge is constructed now, Actually, doing science isn't very practical for all sorts of reasons. But for others, there is clear evidence that students do know what's easier. Some people argue you're comparing apples and pears um, and, you, and, and you can't do that. But, um, you know, despite that, there is the general feeling. And if you read student, um, student websites and forums, there's open discussion, it's, it's, it's common knowledge among students, that's an easy GCSE, that's an easy A-level. I'm taking that because I need this, but I could do with a, with a good grade in that subject, so that's the one I'm doing. Back at Wilmington, the visitor's timetable takes them to ICT. They're studying at A-level in applied ICT, so they are having to develop their skills and produce projects, and it's all marked by portfolio and not by long exam papers in a room. Assessment by portfolio, or coursework, is also blamed for dumbing down education, because it's claimed to be easier to acquire qualifications without examination. But according to the critics, almost all exams have become easier, which accounts for the rise and rise of pass rates. 
Sounds have been changing. They've changed many times over the last few years, but I would never say they're getting easier. They're different. But I think that the pass rates are more valuable, personally, because of they're not just testing regurgitated knowledge. They're testing application and development. And I certainly think the students of today are so committed and so much more hardworking and also much more mature. I think it's dangerous to talk of exams getting easier in, a, in some kind of blanket statement because that devalues the hard work that young people put in um, towards getting their exams, whichever subject they're studying in. And I think teachers work blooming hard uh, with, with the best intentions to educate young people to the best of their ability. The Brit school visitors make their way to their final lesson of the day, science. The head of science here also believes students have become more motivated in recent years. But just in case they haven't, he hands out lollies. If, if and when you get it right, you can have a lolly. Today's lesson is about the heart and circulation. So before we would have just taught them how the heart works, but now it's all about effects of lifestyle, diet, alcohol, smoking and all of that. He believes the change in science exams, making them more relevant to everyday life, has made the difference. Once they perceive a relevance, once they can kind of get an idea this might make a difference to somebody's life, this biology, then they really want to give it a go. Does it make it easier then? No, it might actually make it harder because everything that was there before, plus, so in fact it's more motivational, it could actually be more difficult. In England, the number of pupils gaining five or more GCSE passes at grades A to C has increased dramatically since the exam reforms in 1988, up from 32.8% to 60.8% in 2007. Go back another 20 years to 1968, and the number of pupils who gained equivalent passes at O level and CSE was just 22.5%. What well, goes through your mind every year when the GCSE and A level results come out and Britain's children have done even better than before. <laughs> well, you can imagine what I think. Uh, I, I, because uh, I know what's going on. I think I think it's good that, for instance, in, in the sciences, and I'll wear a science hat just now. Uh, it reflects an, a continuing interest in, in science, which is which is very good. And, and when I look at the other subjects, uh, it, it 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 it's good. But nevertheless, you you then dig deeper. <laughs> Part of what goes through my, my mind is, uh, is pleasure in the fact that we've, we've got students who are performing well. Broadly speaking, exams are not easier now, and so if, if the results are better, that's something to do with uh, the way the students are working, uh, the way the teachers have taught them. While schools celebrate their success, record results are more likely to raise questions than cheers in the press. And one of the biggest questions is whether there's far too much focus on exams, forcing teachers to teach to the test. No one's attacking teachers in this. Teachers don't have control over the exam system. It would surprise me if teachers were insisting that they themselves or they don't see colleagues teaching to the test. Ofsted monitoring lessons say it's a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not teachers' fault that, that exam papers are being put out that have multiple choice questions and, and require three word answers. For our Wilmington and Brit school teachers, however, there's been a noticeable rise in standards in the classroom. From an insider's point of view, you do know exactly how hard the students have, have worked, um, how much they've applied themselves to the techniques that are required for the exams, um, and that they are committed and motivated to achieve those high grades. Teaching, teaching methods, communication, may have improved and I think that, that students may well be achieving higher grades because the, the educational system is, is more responsive to individual needs and so therefore overall we can raise the bar. The Brit school pupils have reached the end of their day at the grammar school for girls and they've reached their final conclusion that all pupils should be given greater opportunity to take expressive and creative courses whatever their school. Most people haven't really considered ever going and do something like film or 
photography because they've just been on that route the whole time. It's just standard maths, English, science, and they probably don't even know that they could have a talent for it or they could. It's really interesting because they've probably never tried it. Exactly. I know a lot of people who are pressured by their parents into doing math, science, and they've ended up dropping the subjects and dropping out of college and they've just gone straight into work. So unless you really have an interest in the subject you're doing, it's not going to benefit anyone. It's the turn of the Brit School to play host to visitors from the Grammar School for Girls. Students Sean and Lauren and their teacher Teresa will be spending the morning with students studying for a BTEC National Diploma in Media Production. This is one of only two classrooms they'll be sitting in during their visit. As part of their work, these students must produce a live television programme about the arts with filmed inserts. You've got seven weeks to uh, shoot your shows. But yours is called Jukebox. Hey kids, come on down, it's Jukebox. <laughs> they leave the classroom and head for the edit suites to work on their films. We made an insert of a band at our school and then we just filmed them like mucking about in this um, the photography studio and like talking about themselves and what they like about the band. And we edited it all together. We used like different effects. I think it's got amazing facilities, uh, resources, because that's what the students here require to fulfil whatever courses that they're doing. So when are you taught how to use this, this sort of equipment? Early year 12. Year 12, yeah. And then they just kind of say, right, go and do it, and then we just left to do it. So if you can't do it, then you fail the project. Oh, but they right. do help you. Yeah. I do like it, it's really attractive. <laughs> you can argue that traditional subjects as chemistry and physics and maths, etc., are much harder. I think we all find subjects like that more difficult at school. But it doesn't necessarily kind of invalidate subjects that are more teamwork based or skills based. When you look at something like this BTEC Media, personally I think it's a very taxing course for a lot of students. And we certainly have students who don't keep up with it and students who don't perhaps achieve as well as they could because it is a really uh, demanding course. It takes it out of people. It takes it out of me. <laughs> the Wilmington visitors are taken to the school's television studio where students produce their shows. Yeah. You ever seen yourself behind a TV camera? <laughs> Does it look a million miles from what you'd imagine a school would have in it, in some ways? A bit. Yeah, yeah. it's just different. Mm. But do you think that, you know, that, that they could do it quite, quite, quite quickly? Well, anyone could do anything with the right training and teaching. It's been different. The school's a lot more creative than our school. Our school provides for us in a different way, so each school makes people successful, but just in different ways. Next stop is the school's radio studio. These students have learned how to produce a radio programme of music and poetry in just three weeks. Coping with the pressure of things going wrong seconds before transmission is all part of the training. 15 seconds, Shannon. Press um, talk back. Talk. Yeah, yeah. Five seconds. You ready? Five seconds. Three, two, one. All right, go. Hello, everybody, and I'm back for the last in instalment of poetry, songs, and the best entertainment since the invention of the television. Even though we've got visitors uh, and a film crew here, uh, you still manage to keep focused, and that's a great thing, OK? And you finish bang on time. You're talking to someone who teaches sociology in an otherwise very academic environment at, at Wilmington, and I, I've defended sociology for my entire teaching career. I consider it a very academic subject. And in many ways, a lot of what I've seen going on here may be more vocational, but in every sense is still demanding. They are good at what they're doing, but the school environment is bringing out that potential in them even, even more. In the afternoon, the Wilmington visitors leave the media department to explore other parts of the Brit School and soon realise that some form of performing arts can be found at every turn. Each student has different priorities, uh, the ability of different students. Um, you know, if they've got that natural rhythm, especially for tap dance, you know, if they've got that natural ability, Let's, let's get that going, let's get that creative, you know, creation happening, let's get that development happening. 
Which is harder, learning the tap dance or doing a bit of maths? Tap! <laughs> different subjects suit different people, so it depends what the person's suited to. Some people find maths hard and some people are find dancing hard. Some people are more academic and some people are more creative. I'm not creative at all. I'm quite happy sitting in the classroom. The Brit School Tour ends with a visit to a more traditional lesson in English literature. Uh, Alcimera has just met Vermandera. And what has he found out? What has Alcimera recognised? Beatrice is already meant to be married. Yes. She's promised to someone else. She's promised to someone else. So where are people getting this idea from that exams are getting easier? I think um, many persons have not been in the classroom. Some of the persons who make those comments have not been in the classroom, but spoken to young people to find out how hard they really work. For example, the text which you're, we're studying here and they're engaged with, it's a changeling. It's quite um, dramatic. It's dealing with very complex ideas and relationships, and yet they are really rising to the challenge very, 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 very well. The Royal Society of Chemistry decided to test whether exams had become easier by producing a science paper based on questions that had been set over the past 50 years. 1,016 year olds sat the exam, and although some achieved marks of over 90%, the average was 25%, with most students struggling with the older questions, particularly ones with greater maths content. So the conclusion we've drawn is that if you look in chemistry, look at the more mathematically oriented components, they would seem to have got somewhat easier. The older ones tend to give uh, sometimes even more information than the, the student needed. And, and there was just a single answer. And the, 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 the student was not led through the question. These days, some questions have four or five parts. So the, the student is virtually led through, almost told how to do the question. The difficulty with studies like that uh, it is always because uh, what you're doing uh, is you're presenting to students who've been taught in the last year or two and who live in today's society. Uh, you're, you're giving them uh, questions that were designed for students who were students back in the 60s or the 70s or a long time ago. And they will tend to find, if not the content, then at least the structure, the format, the language sometimes uh, more difficult to cope with. Other studies, however, have also detected signs of inflation in exam grades. If you look at the research that Durham University have done, where they've taken, they've tested over a, a quite a long period, that 20 to 30 years, they've tested children who've then gone on to take public examinations. What they found is children of similar abilities are now getting higher grades in GCSE and A levels than they were in 1988, for instance. Um, and that's any, you know, someone that might well have failed in 1988 is now getting a C at A level. We never take any account of the new things that they're able to do. What we're doing is we're comparing the way they perform now on something with how their predecessors did. And so all of, all of those new skills that they might have developed, uh, they might, for example, be much more computer literate than their predecessors, all of those things tend to get forgotten. And I think that's one of the difficulties of making those sorts of comparisons. For Ralph Levinson at the Institute of Education, it's essential that exams keep changing to reflect the changing world. And more reforms are needed now. Today, knowledge is just more complicated than it was maybe 30, 40 years ago. And therefore, the kind of things you have to know to be broadly scientifically literate um, are much more complex and difficult than they were some years ago. We're talking about maybe things like stem cell research. Now, it might be that students are actually have to think both about the science, but they also have to think about ethical issues, human rights issues, and so on. And you're bringing together two very different kinds of knowledge. And how you actually measure that, um, well, that's deeply problematic. It's not problematic for the Royal Society of Chemistry. Their message is, forget about the issues, just concentrate on the basics. Somebody comes out at 18, uh, well versed in the, you could say, the topics of the day, but in 10 years time, the topics will be different. 
and they will be lacking the really core skills. And therefore, the, there, are some, you know, there are some sectors of the educational community who say, look, focusing on the core, certainly to 18, is a better route for providing a basis for the next 10 years, rather than something which is fancy and topical at the time. The school exchange has been an education in itself for those involved. They saw the obvious contrasts in style, but in their view, there were more similarities than differences between what's labelled traditional and progressive approaches. I've come away from this school feeling that it's a good quality education that these kids are getting. It felt like a nice community here, and in that sense, it, it replicates very much, or mirrors very much, what we aspire to at the Brit School. The subjects are different, but the approach is very similar. It's quite active learning. And I've seen teachers that are passionate about their subject looking to inspire and managing to inspire students that have made very active choices to, to study those subjects. But what's also struck me are the similarities between the two schools. Um, the working environment between pupils and staff, um, the way in which the whole community is working towards getting the best out of all the students that they have. We should be creating an environment where students have a breadth of choice. It shouldn't be one thing or another. The dumbing down debate is set to continue. But for our exchange students and teachers, there is no argument over which subjects are harder or softer. Their conclusion is that the pressures are just as great and the challenges just as demanding, whether it's a lesson in a maths class or a session in a radio studio.